Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about this Joy Tuttis fridge freezer. This thing is great looking. I really like the looks of it. It's a good size. It's got some nice features on it. So again, if you're looking for a smaller size fridge, maybe something to throw in your trunk or you know take with you to like a camping trip, like as you can see right now, I'm running it off this small 300 watt hour battery pack, just sitting on a table at camp. So I'm gonna show you this thing. I'm gonna show you all the features. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the dimensions and kind of what I like about it. I'm gonna tell you if there's anything that kind of is worrisome to me or things that you should be aware of. And yeah, then I'm gonna kind of give you my final thoughts on it. I've been using it for a couple weeks now and I really, really like it for the size. I'm actually using it in my car this time instead of my big overlanding vehicle because I wanted to get that use case, right? I wanted to use it for something that I might actually use it for like kids baseball games, tailgates. So again, I'm just gonna run you through this thing really quick and we will get you all the info you need to know on the Joy Tuttis fridge freezer. guys so as you can see this is the joy tuttis fridge freezer now there are a number of things that i really like with this fridge i haven't really had any concerns with there is it was making sort of a weird sort of a gurgling coolant noise when it was in the car but i think it may have been just that it got tilted a little bit they do have some instructions up here which i've removed but they do have a sticker up here that says if you do tilt the fridge like fairly extreme to make sure that you let it sit flat for 12 hours just to sort of let the coolant cool back down so that may have been what it was, is that I may have tilted it a little bit. Um, so if that happens, no problem. Just let it sit in your garage or something really flat for about 12 hours or so to let the coolant kind of go down through and get all the air bubbles out of the system. Um, again, now though, not making that noise anymore now that it's on a nice flat surface, seems to be okay. Aesthetically from the outside, I really like the black personally. Like I just think it's way cooler than the sort of like blues and grays that you normally see in these types of fridges. So I just think it's kind of a sharp looking fridge. Um, I really do like the top on it too. And it's got this chain that holds it so that it stays open. As you can see, it does have this nice sort of squishy rubber liner on the inside of it, which sort of goes down around this little lip here. And then that's what keeps all that cold air in. And they've got their name brand here, which I think is cool. It's just a nice touch. And then the other really nice thing is they've got a ton of really important good information in here. So it will show you what all power it's rated for, what you can run it off of, what voltage, 12 volt, 24 volt. Um, what kind of current it should pull, that kind of thing. But then the coolest thing is they actually give you like some tips and tricks and stuff here, and you can see it's cold in there. Um, some tips and tricks for like what temperature to keep it at for different types of food that you may store in the fridge, which is cool. Um, on this trip, I'm just using it to keep my beer cold. So you can see that down there, but that is a full 12 pack and there's still plenty of room around it. I think you could probably get, you know, three or four more beers down there and you could definitely set stuff on top. So as far as the internal dimensions go, I will put those on the screen here. Um, but again, a really good size little fridge. It's still small, it doesn't take up a ton of room, um, but it will hold quite a few drinks or you know condiments and food items if you are taking food on like a three to five day trip. This would probably be perfect. Um, another thing that I like is it does have these built-in handles that are recessed into the side. So what I like about that is a lot of them kind of have like a kick out here and then it doesn't store flat, right? If you put this in the back, then that little bit of extra half inch, three quarters inch lip sticks out and keeps it from being able to be flat against, you know, sort of the wall of your SUV in the back or other gear that you may have packed in like bins and things. So I do really like that those are recessed. There's one on each side, of course, so that you can pick it up really easily. The plug does go down here. Again, it's pretty much a standard uh, 12 volt plug for most of these things. So if you have other fridges, you could probably swap them interchangeably. Because I am running this off this little battery pack, I'm currently running it at on AC. And you can see on AC, it's pulling about 60 watts when it kicks on, 60, 65 watts. So it does pull a good amount of power when it's running. Now, granted, I've just had this thing open for, you know, 30, 45 seconds talking about it. So that's why it had to kick on again. It is pretty good at keeping the temperature about where you set it. I have it set at 32. So even though I've had it open, um, it is at 35 right now, which is cool. Um, you've got a power button. You hold that for a few seconds to turn it on. Again, they've got these really nice instructions on here, which is really nice. So another cool thing is that they, it basically goes into like a lock mode when you're not using it. 
if you hold on this settings, this like gear button here, you'll see there was a lock button on there. Um, but now that I've held that, it's actually unlocked itself. So now I can adjust the temperature and things like that. But if it was in your trunk and something fell against it, it's not gonna like shoot up your temperature or freeze all your food. It can't move until you unlock it. But so, you know, you hit either the plus or the minus. You see that it's set at 32 there. I can go down to 30 or 31 or whatever. I'm gonna go to 32 and leave it there. And then right now it is set to max, but I wanna maximize the amount of time that this battery will last. So I'm gonna hit the, the gear button. And then you can see now it's switched to eco mode and that's where I want it. So I just hit this a couple times until it switched from max to eco and I'm just gonna leave it there. So that way it won't, it won't work quite as hard to sort of keep that temperature exactly at 32. I'm just keeping drinks in here, not food. So if it goes up to 38 or 40 or something for a second and then kicks back on, but it makes my battery last longer, I'm okay with that. Um, if you're wondering why I'm running it off AC, because as you probably know, it's way less efficient than DC, right? Like this is intended to be a DC fridge. It does come with both the AC plug and the DC plug, which is really nice. So if you wanted to use this as like a, energy drink fridge or a beer fridge in your house, you could do that. Um, but I'm running it off the AC because this battery pack is stupid. It's not smart enough, so whenever it stops, whenever the fridge reaches temp and it shuts off, then this goes, hey, nothing's drawn power, I shouldn't be wasting my power staying on, and it turns off. Then when that happens, then the fridge doesn't have power to turn itself back on when it starts to creep up in temperature. So I'm running it off AC because the AC on these, uh, you know, sort of dumb units, if you will, they stay running all the time. So the AC just, once you press this button, it just stays on and it will just constantly use power as needed. So it is a little bit less efficient. I've been running it now for about five hours off of this. Again, this is a 300 watt hour unit. So that's pretty impressive that I've been running it at, you know, this kind of temp. I did not pre-cool it or anything. The beer did come out of a fridge at home. So the beer was pre-cooled, but the fridge itself was not. It was like 66 to 70 degrees in there when I first turned it on. And it had to bring that down from that temp down to uh, the 32 that I have it set to, and it did all that, and it's been running for five hours, and it's only used one-fifth of my 300 watt hour battery. So that's really impressive. Seems to be pretty efficient at, you know, sort of maintaining its temp and also power usage while doing that. Um, again, I really like that they give you like the instructions built right into the fridge here. You can remove these if you want, but that way they're always here if you leave them and you don't have to worry about bringing a manual with you or anything like that. If you can't remember how to use it or how to get the lock off or anything, it tells you how to do all that stuff on here. Um, one other nice thing that all these seem to have, a lot of these fridges have is like a USB point that you could use to charge stuff. Now, for me, I don't think I'll really use that because I could just plug something into there. Like, I'm charging this off of this. But if you were charging it off, like, your vehicle battery or running it off your vehicle battery and you didn't have any sort of, like, USB output and you needed to charge a phone or something, you definitely could plug into this USB here and then use that to charge your phone or your devices, that sort of thing. So, kind of a nice feature. Better to have it than not to have it, right? So. All right, so that was the Joy Tuttis Fridge Freezer. Again, for a budget option, this thing is very inexpensive. I'll put the price up on the screen here. I'll also put a link in the description down below. So if you're looking for something like this, or if you think this might be the fridge for you, it makes it really easy to pick it up. But these things are just, they're great looking fridges. They are very nice little runners. I've had several of these from Joy Tuttis or from other sort of similar brands, and they've lasted for years. They're just good fridges for the money. And again, for like a quarter, a fifth, an eighth of the cost of some of the bigger name brand fridges, I think these are really good little options, especially if you're not like a super hardcore like overlander camper and you're not like, you're looking to go maybe six, eight times a year and you just want something that you don't have to mess with ice and you can just plug into like a little battery pack like this and just kind of take with you. This would be a good option for you for something like that. Or again, tailgating, things like that. Um, so again, lots of cool options, lots of cool ways that you could use this little guy. Um, Overall, very impressed with it. Really like the look of it. Really like the features of it. And it's just a good budget-minded fridge. So, um, again, if you're looking for something like that, link in the description below. If you have any questions or anything, I'd love to hear from you. Post up in the comments down below. Happy to answer any questions that you've got. If you have a fridge like this or if you, uh, you know, have this exact fridge, post up in the comments and let me know what you think. Let me know any experiences that you've had with it. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you get value out of the video, click that like button. That helps more than you know. And if you're not already, make sure to click that subscribe button. Click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. I do do like a gear review pretty much every week or like a do-it-yourself modification or a gear modification. Um, and then I do like an overlanding slash camping podcast slash vlog once a week. So at least a couple videos every single week talking about travel, outdoors, gear, that kind of thing. So if you're into that stuff, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Also in the description below will be links to Facebook, Instagram, my TikTok. There's just tons of different channels, right? I'm all over the place. So if you're on one of those channels and you want to hang out, I'd love to have you come hang out. And then, of course, also in the description below towards the bottom is a link to the Patreon page. It's a group of 
some folks that are talking. We have an, actually an exclusive Discord just for the Patreon folks where we kind of talk about camping and overlanding 24-7. Um, we also do like once a month, we do sort of like a video where they get to be on a video or on the podcast um, and we talk about a topic. We pick a topic about overlanding and we all kind of just get down on it. So if you want to do that, definitely check out the Patreon link as well. And then last but not least, the Newbie Overlanders group. Super awesome, huge growing group of folks that are new to overlanding or are experienced and want to help new folks and are kind of tired of the negativity from the bigger groups. So if you're looking for like a really wholesome, good group where people aren't going to beat you up just for asking a question, we'd love to have you come join over there. Um, but again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you guys next week.